First of all, then, the law of God is a mirror that reflects for us the glory of God. Now, it's very important to realize that the Ten Commandments are not simply an arbitrary list of rules. They are a direct reflection of the glorious character of our wonderful God. In the New Testament, some of you will know this verse, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of Now, if you think about it, how would you expect that verse to end? You might expect that it would end this way. All have sinned and fall short of the commandments of God. But many of you know that's not what it says. What it says is, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, which leads to this very wonderful truth that the commandments of God are a direct reflection of the glory of God or of the character of God. In other words, what God is saying to His own redeemed people is, look, I've made you my own. You bear my name in the world, and therefore what I'm calling you to as my redeemed people is that you will live a life that is a reflection of what I'm like, and a reflection of what I'm like is right here for you in these Ten Commandments. Think about it why should you not commit adultery? Answer, because your God is faithful, and He wants to see a reflection of His faithfulness in you. He says to you, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Now, you are His child. You are to reflect His faithfulness. Why should you not steal? Well, because God can be trusted And because you belong to Him as His redeemed son or His redeemed daughter, He wants you to be trustworthy as He is worthy of all your trust. Why should you not lie? Well, because God's Word is truth. And therefore, because you belong to Him, you're His redeemed child, He wants you to be true to your Word in the same way as He is true to His Word. Why should you not covet? Well, God is content. He is at peace in Himself because He is working all things out in accordance with His sovereign will. And if you belong to Him, and therefore you represent Him in the world, well, God says, let there be a peace and a contentment about you that demonstrates that as my child, you have confidence in my ability to work out my sovereign will in regards to your life as well. When God says, you shall have no other gods before me, why does He say that? Because He is the one and only true God. There is no one else who is like Him. When He says that we are to rest on one day of the week, why does He say that? Because God Himself rested on the seventh day, and our work is being modeled for us by Him in the very act of His creation. So, in these commandments, God is speaking to His own people. He's speaking to His redeemed people, and He's saying, now, you are my people. You bear my name in this world. I've redeemed you. I have brought you out. I am therefore calling you, you who have experienced my grace and my redeeming power, I am calling you to live a life that reflects who I am, and this is what a life that reflects who I am looks like. By the way, people often debate, can you be good without God? Now, you think about that, the question it raises, well, it depends what you mean by good, because the Bible tells us that God is good and that our good lies in reflecting who He is. So, what happens when a culture turns away from God is that there's then a desperate scramble to define what good actually is, and it gets defined by various groups according to self-interest, and soon you then have a culture that calls good evil and calls evil good. David says in the Psalms, Oh, how I love your law.
Now, why would David say that he loves the law of God? Answer, he loves God. And the law of God is a reflection of the character of God. And because he loves God, he loves the reflection that is there in the commandments that God is calling him to pursue. The law reflects the glory of God. It is the mirror to us of who He is and therefore the laying out of the life to which He calls us. God is love. And the Ten Commandments really spell out for us what a life of love really looks like, what a life that is patterned after the character of God actually looks like. Remember, on one occasion, Jesus was asked by someone who was actually trying to trip him up with a trick question. Jesus was asked, this is Matthew chapter 22, which is the great commandment in the law? Pick one that's the most important. And instead of picking one, what Jesus did was He wrapped all ten together, and He said this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, Jesus is making absolutely clear to us that the Ten Commandments are laying out what a life of love looks like. Now, the Beatles had this song, you know, all you need is love. I'm not going to get everyone singing that, but I, 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 no, let's not do that. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Well, it's a memorable song, but here's the problem. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people in our world have no real idea as to what love actually is. And here's the question then. What does a life of love look like in practice? What does it actually look like to love God? And what does it actually look like to love your neighbor as yourself? Well, the Ten Commandments lay out the answer. Think about it. The first four commandments tell us what loving God looks like. It's that you have no other gods before the Lord. It's that you don't make an image. In other words, you love Him as He is, not as you would like or imagine Him to be. It means that you hallow His name and you never use it in vain. It means that you give Him time, time to worship, time to serve, time to remember that ahead of you is a vast eternity for which you must prepare. It's what loving God looks like. And the last six commandments tell us what it looks like to love your neighbor as yourself. And when God speaks to us and lays it out, He's saying to us very clearly with the fifth commandment, you know what, if you're going to talk about love, it had better begin at home. With the very first people God puts in your life, honor your father and your mother. It means that you will revere life as a sacred gift from God to be treasured and preserved. It means that you will be faithful to your spouse. It means that you will be trusted not to take advantage of the weakness or vulnerability of another person. It means that you will be true to your word and that your word will be true, and it means that you will rejoice in what God has given to others rather than churlishly saying, why didn't God give it to me? So, the Ten Commandments are a mirror that reflects the glory of God. God is love, and He calls us as His redeemed people to a life that reflects who He is. And what that life looks like is spelled out in the Ten Commandments. That's why David says, oh, how I love your law. Lord, I love you. I want to be like you. Thank you for laying out what that looks like so that I may pursue such a life. Now, that's the first thing about the Ten Commandments. This is why we should treasure them, why, like David, we should love God's law, and why we should seek to pursue it. It is a mirror reflecting the glory of God. 